sir. Is there something the matter, Mr. Hunt? There is. Head office has just been on the phone. Brigadier Hogg is on his way over here. Obviously, somebody has boobed. Where is our little ball of fire? Our little... He's away in the food department. He's checking the sales figures. Uh, have you seen this graph, Mr. Hunt? I've just finished it. What happened here? Somebody get behind you with a pin. No, Mr. Hunt. They did not. Here's the breakdown. Sold out of dates and figs and salted almonds at... A six-month supply of tangerine sold in one day. Have these figures gone into head office? Oh, yes. The day before yesterday. That's why Hawk's on his way over here now. But do you think the figures are wrong? Mr. Well, of course they're wrong. Anybody can see that. I mean, 500% uh, increase in one month in this department. You're joking. You know what's happened, don't you? No, what? Some adult painted twins has entered the date, the telephone number, and the national debt and sent them in without checking. I wonder who could possibly have done a thing like that, Mr. Hunt. Oh, good morning, sir. Mr. Sinclair. Uh, Mr. Sinclair. You look bemused, Mr. Hunt. Surely there's not a crisis. However, did you guess, Swindley? Miss Sinclair, I think you'd better leave us. I'm about to use language unfit for a lady's ear. Even yours. Very well, Mr. Hunt. You incompetent twit, Swindley! Have you seen these damn fool sales figures and you had the nerve to send them into head office? Ah, yes. It's a thought-provoking document, isn't it, sir? It's provoking, Brigadier Hawk. I'm expecting him here at any moment. And you, Swindley, are definitely going to carry the can. Oh, I couldn't possibly usurp your position as manager, sir. Oh, yes, you can, Swindley. <laughs> this is your baby, and I'm going to be very happy watching you hold it. Come in! Thank oh. you, <laughs> uh, Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Swindley. Good morning, sir. I've been out here on a conference. I thought I'd drop by and have a word with you. I hope we find you in the pink, sir, and glowing with your usual vitality. I'm not a Venetia beacon, Swindy. <laughs> well, then, Hunt, I expect you guess what's on my mind. Oh, yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, I mean, uh, Swindy will explain, sir. Explain what? These sales figures, sir. I take it you've seen them? No, I haven't. That's very gratifying. How do you account for this phenomenal increase? Well, it's rather an interesting situation, sir. <clears throat> You've heard, of course, of the shakedom of Barat. Oh, yes, the place where they've had a spot of bother. Precisely, sir. A coup d'etat. A military junta is now ruling the country under the command of Field Marshal Abdul Ben Kabul. Uh, do get on with it, Swindley. You're not reading the news. <laughs> Quite so. But, uh, now we come to the crux of the matter. The, uh, the deposed sheikh, Harun El Kabir, managed to escape along with his grand vizier, his personal bodyguard, and 12 of his 94 wives. A staff shortage at a time like that. Please, Mr. Hunt. To the Sheikh, this is a tragedy. He has been granted asylum in this country. Yes, yes, we all know that. Staying at the Queen's. That's very kind of us, would you? The Queen's Hotel, sir. <laughs> Here in this very town. Bad luck. <clears throat> Hence, the gratifying increase in our sale of exotic foods. Do you mean to tell me that those figures are right? They most certainly are, sir. And what's more, we now have a standing order for pomegranates, cantaloupes, kumquats, quince, and a daily quota of passion fruit. For the sheikh or for his wives? Well, now, I'm hardly in a position to say that, sir. Well, if you can do that selling fruits, Findlay, let's hope you can do as well selling tickets for the charity ball this year. That's what I came about. We're desperately short of money for the cottage home. Yeah. I want this area to aim at a target of 500 pounds. Well, as much as that, sir? Yes, Hunt, otherwise the home will have to close. Oh, we could never allow that, sir. All our retired employees, grown old in the service of Dobson and Hawks, they must have somewhere to spend the mellow evening of their years. Exactly. If income tax goes up any more, I'm going in there myself. <laughs> well, uh, don't you worry, sir. This branch won't let you down. Let's hope you're right, huh? Well, time in the aeroplane. Wait for no man. <laughs> <laughs> right, sir. Bye, <laughs> <Goodbye>, sir. <laughs> Goodbye, and thank you. <laughs> How the devil are we going to raise 500 quid? <clears throat> well, now... Uh, <laughs> For a start, sir, we've got to move the whereabouts of the dance. We've got to go right to the top, to the best that this fair city can offer, the Queen's Hotel. We'll never get in there with all those Arabs running around. Oh, I doubt if their caravan will be resting in the ballroom. We must have a cabaret, sir. A floor show. We can't afford a cabaret. Oh, we don't need to do it professionally. I'm sure that in a store like this, there must be any amount of hidden talent. I myself am not without histrionic ability. <laughs> Leave this to me, sir. Leave everything in my hands. Have you got your tickets for the ball, Mrs. Edgley? Oh, yes, I got them today. Mind you, Edgar's not too keen. Still, you know what men are. I suppose he'll be all right once he gets to the bar. I understand Mrs. Swindley's holding auditions for the cabaret. Will you be there? Oh, I'd love to have a go. <laughs> Edgar wouldn't stand for it. Well, what's it got to do with him? It doesn't hold with me exposing myself in public. <laughs> I do think that's quite the sort of cabaret that Mr. Swindley had in mind. No, well, he's a very jealous man, you see. 
It's very flattering after all these years. It must be. It's a wonder he doesn't put you in one of those yashmaks like one of the Arabs at the Queen's. Ah, uh, Mrs. Edgeley. Yes? Yeah. I would esteem it a great honour if you would bake me a cake. Is it your birthday? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's for the charity ball. Guess the weight. Half a crown ago. Oh, right. You shall have one of my best dundees. Splendid. I don't know about guessing the weight. Nobody will be able to lift it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how's it going, Spindley? Oh, I think we've got a smasher on our hands, sir, if you pardon the expression. The cabaret will consist of excerpts from that well-known musical comedy, The Arabian Princess. A certain hit, sir. I did it myself many years ago with the haberdashers, uh, haberdashers operatic. Yes, yes. Well, uh, have you decided on the price for the raffle? Yes, a weekend in Paris for two, all expenses paid. You're out of your mind. Who's going to pay for it? Well, I thought we might approach our bold brigadier. That's Kinfred. You won't get a brass farthing out of him. Oh, surely he wouldn't let down the course, sir. Yeah, good gracious. Is it that time? Uh, I wonder if you'd, uh, if you'd let me use your office for the auditions. I should be delighted. After you, Mr. Parnell. Yes. <laughs> oh, isn't it exciting? And they do say, you know, that Jane Russell was discovered in a works canteen. Doing what? <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll let you know. <laughs> Don't ring us. We'll ring you. <laughs> yes? Yes, yes. Just a moment. For you, Swindler. Ah, thank you, sir. Yes. Swindler speaking. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh. oh. Oh, really? Oh, splendid. That's most gratifying. Please convey our appreciation to the Brigadier, Miss... Uh, <clears throat> Goodbye. Well, all's well there, sir. The Brigadier has agreed to present the weekend in Paris for the raffle. And they say the age of miracles is past. Yeah, well, it's, it's one problem solved, but uh, we open next week and we're still without a leading lady. I shall be playing Ali Mohammed, the Sultan of Samarkand. Of course. Mm. But who is to play the beautiful slave, slave girl, Aziza? You mean you're up the creek without a coloratura? <laughs> exactly, sir. Now, where in the world am I going to find a heroine who can dance like an angel and sing like a bird? Do you hear what I hear? Mr. Hunt, I believe a star is born. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Edgley. Here's your tea, Mr. Hunt. Thank you I didn't much. want to disturb you no. before. Hey. Yo. Mrs. Edgley. Yeah? Did you see somebody singing in the corridor out there just now? Oh, I'm ever so sorry, Mr. Swindley. I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> what? You mean, you mean it was you? Uh, I, Mr. Hunt, I think I found her, my little Aziza. <laughs> Never look a gift horse in the mouth, sir. Look, would somebody mind telling me what you're on about? Sit down, Mrs. Edgeley. Eh? You don't mind, sir? No, no, no. no, no. Thank you. <clears throat> now, Mrs. Edgeley, we are talking about the cabaret yes. for the charity ball. Oh. And I want you to sing the part of Aziza in excerpts from the Arabian Princess. Oh, lovely. I know it. Our local operatic society did it last year. I made the tea at the rehearsals. <laughs> Mr. Hunt, I'm beginning to scent the sweet smell of success. Ah, but we must keep all this from Edgar. Otherwise, he'll make a right nuisance of himself. This will be our little secret until the first night, Mrs. Itchley. <laughs> now, do you remember that waltz that brings the second act curtain down? Um, oh, yes, In Summer, Summer Camp. Uh, the one that goes, I pledge my love in that, That's the one. Let's just have a look at it in the okay. score here. Yes. <clears throat> right. One, two. I pledge my, my love by pale moonlight And bill and cool through the night In starlit summer <laughs> Edgley, whatever are you doing here? Well, it's her night for the pictures. Is she ready yet? Oh, uh, I don't think she is. Uh, well, perhaps she'd better explain herself. Oh. Hello, Edgar Love. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. I shall be working late tonight. Again? What's it all about tonight? I'm doing something with Mr. Swindley. Oh. <laughs> What's this Mr. Swindley got? I'm getting a bit chocker with him. There's nothing to get excited about. He just wanted me to help check the canteen stock. You did that last night. <laughs> and the night before. Yes. Well, that was the dry stock. Tonight, it's the wet. <laughs> He's a bald-headed little twit. Edgar! <laughs> now, Edgar, you're not to be rude about Mr. Swindley. He's a gentleman. 
I'll bet he doesn't sit down to his supper with his braces on. Oh. <laughs> You've had time to find that out. Oh, Edgar. Well, you haven't been on before ten o'clock for the last week. Ah, oh, Mrs. Edgerly, yes. you haven't forgotten our little tryst this evening? No, I'll be here, no, Mr. No. Swindley. <laughs> you haven't met my husband, have you? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Uh... Look here, Mr. Swindley, what's the idea of finding all this extra work for my Mabel? Ah, uh, well, now, your charming wife has certain qualifications which are lacking in other female members of the staff. I know all about her qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> and what business are they of yours? Behave yourself, Edgar. <coughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you later, Mrs. Edgley. I'm ashamed of you, Edgar, behaving like that to Mr. Swindley. And why don't you take your cap off when you're talking to him? He's not Harold Wilson. <laughs> Come in. Ah, oh, Mrs. Edgley. Yes. Our costumes have arrived. Oh, lovely. Where's mine? Oh, I Edgar will have a fit when he sees me in that. It's transparent. Diaphanous, Mrs. Edgley. Mm. You look charming. He kicked up enough fuss at Blackpool last year when I wore my bikini on the beach. <coughs> yes. Well, now, uh, shall we just uh, run through the dialogue leading up to the finale? Yes. Yes. Positions, please. Oh, right. Come on, then. <coughs> Ah, oh, yes. Have it. Oh. Right. Have it. Right. Now remember, Mrs. Edgley. I want you to remember Mrs. Ed Mrs. Edgley. Yeah. Can you remember that you are a beautiful Eastern slave girl yes. supplicating before the Sultan of Samarkand? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Spawn of Satan, I'll have thee flogged in the marketplace. Oh. Auspicious Sultan, Prince of Believers, whom Allah preserve, have mercy. I am not, wait a minute, I am not that which thou thinkest I am. Yes. <coughs> now, Mrs. Dedlin, could, could you say these lines, do you think, with a little more expression? Yes. Now, now, just listen to the way I say my words. Oh, woman of little worth, if thou art not that which I thinkest thou art, who thinkest thou thyself to be? Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I am Aziza. I am dust beneath your shoe. Quite so. <laughs> there you are. Aziza, O oh moon of my delight. O oh prince of my desire. Yeah, Mrs. Edgley. Yes. <laughs> Uh, say it a little more ardently. Remember, you're supposed to be passionately in love with me. Yes. <coughs> oh, Prince of my desire. Oh, pearl beyond price, come to my arms. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, it cannot be. I belong to another. Do not despair, beloved. Let us fly together. Ah, if only it were possible, then our love be need be secret no longer. Well, if you finished checking your stock, I'm ready to take you home. Champagne, Miss Sinclair. Thank you, Brigadier. Very good turnout tonight, huh? Oh, very gratifying, sir. Very gratifying indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank think you. Think we'll get the money we want? Oh, yes, yes. I think the cottage home is safe for another year, sir. Thanks to your generosity. My generosity? <laughs> the best prize in the raffle, Brigadier. What about it? Well, it's very kind of you to present that weekend in Paris. What the blazes are you dribbling about? Well, Swindley told me that you'd agreed to present it, sir. I will have him certified. I said that I would present the prize to the winner. I didn't say that I'd pay for it. Uh, Mr. Hunt did say he thought it unlikely you'd wish to part with that sort of money. Damn right I don't. Would you mind telling me where Swindley is now? Uh, he's just getting ready for the cabaret, sir. It had better be good, that's all I can say. It had better be the best floor show I have ever seen. <laughs> Are you ready, Mr. Swindley? I'll be with you in a moment, Mr. Edgley. Right. <laughs> oh, there you 
Francis Edgley. I've never recognized you behind your yes, <laughs> Mac. No, get off it. Miss Curry. Miss Unhand me, sir. Silence. Dog of a dog. How dare you? I'm a British subject. <laughs> and I am the mighty one's favorite wife. Yeah, quite so. Into my fish smoke. English. Yeah, yeah. Time grows nigh, O oh mighty one, for the visit of the emissary from that rebel pig Abu Ben Kabul. He comes with evil purpose, O Grand Vizier. That dog of dogs, Abu Ben Kabul, would have me dead. So, my master, you must not grant audience to this messenger. And have it put about that I go in fear and trembling for my life? What would my people think? Oh, my true son of Allah, you must appear to appear, and then not appear. And how shall this miracle come to pass? Who can take the place of the Lord of the Sun, the Lion of the East? Where in the world are we to find a magnificent, godlike figure of a man like me? With your permission, sir. <laughs> you see, O oh noble one, Allah always answers the prayers of the faithful. But look closely, my master. Is not the prisoner so like you that no stranger could tell the difference? Allah be praised. Oh, it was nothing, really. Who is the prisoner? <laughs> Almighty One, an infidel spawn of Satan caught molesting one of your hurry. Yassima. Yassima? Is she a wife or a concubine? Yassima, your highness, is the traveling reserve. Ah. <laughs> yes. Uh, nevertheless, the offense is still grave. Quite so. That is why this infidel must take your place. If he should be killed, only then we shall find out how to trust the word of that rat cabal. <laughs> no, it can be done as you suggest. I shall conceal myself behind the screen. Release the prisoner. Greetings, O mighty one, and welcome, welcome to our humble abode. Now look here, I demand an apology. Oh, a thousand apologies in our humble obeisances, sire. And now perhaps you would do me the honor of joining us in a little couscous? I beg your pardon? A little couscous, rice with boiled sheep's eyes. <coughs> Thank you, I'm, I'm not very hungry. Oh. And now if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment. You see, O oh noble one, we couldn't allow you to leave without first partaking of a little refreshment. <coughs> Thank you, but I've eaten my fill at our supper buffet. <laughs> the emissary has arrived and craves audience with the commander of the faithful. Have the messenger enter. Perhaps I'd better go. I'm sure you'd like to speak to this gentleman alone. On the uh, contrary. Come, my friend, do sit down. Make yourself quite comfortable. I'm sure you're going to find this very interesting. In any case, we should welcome your reactions in this, Your Highness. I bring greetings from my master to Sheikh Harun El Kabir. My master returns your greetings and bids you deliver your message. First, O oh illustrious one, I bring thee gifts, gifts from our fair country. For me? Uh, for you to sample, O oh Lord. Oh, I understand. You want the benefit of my knowledge and experience. I take it you are some kind of, of representative. Indeed, I represent the new United East. Oh, one of your export firms. <laughs> we stock a much better line than this ourselves. Taste them, taste them, my No, 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 let's see what else you brought first. Uh, figs, figs from the oasis of Barat. <laughs> now they're packaged very poorly. No little plastic fork. <laughs> Definitely musty. I don't advise you to buy any of those. I beg Would you to try them, O oh Grace. No, 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 thank you. I, I don't want any jippo tummy. Try then this... <laughs> try then this Turkish delight compounded from all the spices of the East. Now, there's a line that I haven't seen for years. Really? Yes. <laughs> Most interesting. This is my last gift, O oh Prince. This you must eat. Only thus can you savor the melting joys of the snow in June. 
Well, I must say it looks very tempting. This is the best line you've shown us so far. Eat, eat, I beseech you, eat. Do you really want my expert opinion? If you would be so gracious, Your Highness. Then I'll let you into a little, a little trick of the trade. Mm -hmm. I never buy a new line without first asking the traveller to take some himself. That way I make sure that my customers are not poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> you are a man, a man of great wisdom and perception, O oh sapient one. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your wares, O oh laughing one. I, I care not for crystallized fruit. No, oh, well, try some, uh, try some dates or some Turkish delight. I, I cannot eat. I am fasting. Eat, eat, I say. <laughs> Out with no, this no. serpent of Satan. Mercy. Out. Mercy. Allah. Allah. And feed him. Feed him well with his own foodstuffs. Well, I must say, he didn't seem to have very much confidence in his own samples. You are right, Mr. <laughs> Never have I seen a villain exposed with such skill. Villain? What villain? Oh, saviour of my life. I am Sheikh Harunga ibn uh, Karain, and this is my grand vizier. And that curse of the prophet... <coughs> to... <coughs> ...was sent to kill me. <laughs> to kill you? Good heavens, how do you know that? Almighty Sheikh of Sheikhs, the rebel dog has eaten of the fruits of his wickedness and is exceeding sick. <laughs> oh dear, hadn't you better send for a doctor? Yes, but send for him slowly. Oh, come, isn't that being rather hard on the poor chap? I mean, this could have happened to anybody. It would <laughs> certainly have happened to you, oh prudent one, but for your wily wisdom. Thank you. Now do tell us, O oh wise one, how did you know the food was poisoned? Oh, experience, my dear sir. I've been in the retail trade about... Poisoned? <laughs> did you say poisoned? Poisoned? I did say poisoned. Poisoned. And I cannot let you go without expressing my gratitude. Name anything you desire. Perhaps a couple of my wives. <laughs> no, 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 no. And jewels, then. <laughs> Precious stones. No, 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 no. Just a few. Cadillacs? Really, you're more than kind, uh, but thank you, no. Is there nothing I can give you? There is perhaps just one thing. I would very much appreciate a donation to our cottage home. It shall be done. Say when. <laughs> hey, uh, excuse me, have you uh, seen anything of my Mabel? Uh, no, I'm afraid I haven't missed her, sir. Uh, she's getting ready for the cabaret. That was half an hour ago. I hope that shake hasn't pinched her and pushed her into Perda. I think that she's Perda's crowded enough already. Mr. Ainsley, why don't you sit down? Oh, You'll right, need right. to. Thank you, yes. Right. How <laughs> right. oh, do? Who on earth is that? <coughs> Canteen manageress's husband. There's that shake fella. And he's got my Mabel with him. Oh, lie down, Mr. Ainsley. Try and enjoy it. Great heavens, it's Swindley. What on earth are you playing at? Fear not, O oh noble. No <coughs> <laughs> uh, Brigadier, everything is under control. Well, get on with it, man. I've been waiting for that cabaret all night. Won't be more than a moment now, sir. But first, let me present you with a donation to our cottage home. Five hundred pounds. I don't believe it. A gift from the gods. Well, in a sense, yes. From Allah, to be precise. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's cabaret time. Oh, very good. And we bring you the Arabian Princess. <laughs> My love by pale moonlight and bill and cool through the night in starlit Samarkand. I'm sure that you are my heart's delight and never let you out.